It was a poster advertising holidays in Scotland. I was a ghost. L B S. Lubes. What are lubes? L. <laughs> the machine wasn't about to weigh me for nothing. I put the old penny into the slot. The needle twitched rustily, and the machine spat out a card. It was a very old bar of chocolate with a row of boys pictured on the wrapper. The weight was in imperial units. It meant nothing to me. The card also had my fortune on it. A family quarrel will turn out to your advantage. The poster was advertising a play I'd never heard of. The date on the poster was before I was born. It was an old map of the London Underground. You see the ghost? It looked just like the modern one. It was a maintenance cup. A latch lock stopped me getting into the cupboard. <laughs> no. The blade of the dagger just fitted between the door and the soft wood frame. The door gave slightly and then held firm. My fingers were too big to reach into the tiny crack. A small crack had appeared where the dagger had pried the door from its frame. Through the crack, I could just make out the latch which stopped the door from opening. The hair grip was too thick to fit into the crack. Really? The blade of the dagger was too thick to get into the narrow crack. I remembered my student days when I regularly forgot my house keys. A wiggle with the thick card between the frame and the lock and the latch lifted. Sure. It was a big red ever so ter Push it. <laughs> the train was my ride out of there. I could worry about not having a ticket when I got to the docks. Oh, I love these puzzles. Prepare to get lost. Uh oh, what's this? It was a stagnant swamp. A clump of reeds grew out of the. Uh. Pick up everything, George. You know the drill. There was something in that hole beneath the rock. As soon as I stooped to investigate the hole, its inhabitant disappeared into the darkness. 
It was a short, hollow reed. The end of the reed had been neatly bitten off. Now I knew what was living in there. A long-toothed, snarling, furry, wild thing. Move it, you son of a bitch, move it. Okay. Well, I got somewhere. I stopped recording because I was just, you know, walking aimlessly, but I came here. Initials had been carved into the rock. Initials carved into the stone read F K. Frederick Ketch had been here. F K was Joining here. Joining the dots would make an equilateral triangle. Three shallow holes had been made in the rock. The hill I was on had reminded me of a camel's hump as I'd climbed up it. Now I had to see what I could see. No. Oh, crap. Let's see what we can see, huh? Ketch could have hidden his treasure anywhere. This island's full of hiding places. Down back. Once again into the breach. I'm uh, probably gonna cut here again. Because this is obviously getting silly. Well, now I'm somewhere else. I was able to Oh. It was a stout overhanging branch. 
I was able to get back to the cliff and then I just entered the jungle through the bottom exit instead. The path was blocked by an ugly and extremely dangerous looking boar. If I jumped, I could just about reach the branch. Climbing the tree wasn't going to help any in this situation. Piggy, piggy, piggy. The boar's expression said, forget it, Stobart. The dart fitted snugly into the reed. Great. I was tooled up and dangerous. <laughs> Get on the branch. Oh. Climbing the tree wasn't going to help any in this. Hello. The rock was partially overgrown by creepers. <laughs> it was a needle of rock in the middle of the clearing. It didn't look like a natural formation. I remembered Ketch's log. For is it not writ? that tis easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Seemed pretty relevant now. So there's the plateau, huh? Climb up, George. <laughs> no good. I'd have to be bitten by a radioactive spider before I stood any chance of getting up there. Creeper. The creeper just came away from the rock as I pulled it. The creeper didn't look like it would hold my weight. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. The creeper felt unpleasant and fleshy. No? <laughs> no, what are you doing? Not the same shit again. Oh, God. The marker clipped firmly onto the net. Great. I'd created some sort of creeper marker fishing net assembly. Sometimes I terrify myself with my creative genius. I'd successfully got the marker into a position near the top of the needle simply by using the kind of lateral thinking that can get you institutionalized. Good shit. Let's get up there. Oh no. This again. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, I found it. It was a good cave for hiding treasure in. Shame about the flooding problem. A needle rock. Eye of the needle? It was the marker which I had raised up the needle of rock. I could see the marker I had fastened on the rock down in the forest, and right in line with it, that had to be where Ketch had hidden his treasure. Now what? Now what? The crate was a good hiding place, but I couldn't stay there forever. It was risky, but I thought I could get to the next crate unseen. The Xibalba princess lay at anchor just below Tower Bridge. I knew I'd found the right ship as soon as I saw Pablo at the rail. Ma, the porthole. It was a porthole to the main cabin. A mop for swabbing the <coughs> stood against the wall. God. I guess you can die. Oh gosh. That, that was unpleasant. Slip on something, maybe? It was the door to the boat's main cabin. It looked like the door to some sort of utility locker. Metal hooks had been welded onto each side of the door frame. Hooray! The tactical advantage of hiding in there escaped me. Shit. Get back. Can you close it? I don't know, mop the floor or something. Oh my god.
There you go. Got you. It was a port. But the Kola woman was there. They'll know it was me. But you have the stone. The right stone, you're sure? Yes, of course, it's the Jaguar stone. No possible mistake. Here it is. Garzak, please. The police will be looking for me soon. You're going to get me out of the country, aren't you? Stop your whining, Ubier. Do you have any idea what this stone symbolizes? I thought you just wanted it to frighten the natives. Fool. I intend to cast this stone into the sea. But why? It's unique. Exactly. With it gone, the Mayan priest's plan to destroy Tezcatlipoca cannot succeed. I can assure you that Tezcatlipoca is a mythical figure. Such a small mind you live in. Tezcatlipoca is real. I have seen him in my dreams. We have spoken of his plans for this world. We have spoken of your part in these plans. My part? He told me you would be useful. He told me how to crush your spirit by turning you to drugs. My wife died. You know that full well. She was my world, my everything. And now? You are no longer useful. She called out your name as she died. What? What are you saying? And then they thought you'd done it. It all worked perfectly. You? It was you? You bastard! You monster! For the love of God, Kazak! Which one? <laughs> Damn. It was the Jaguar stone that Oubier had stolen from the museum. It was identical in size and shape to the Coyote stone, a stylized carving of a Jaguar decorated one side. Maybe you should take it? Take I it. couldn't just rifle his body without making sure he was really dead. Oubier lay sp There were no signs of life, but I checked that Oubier really was beyond help. We were going to need the stone to thwart Karzak. I knew Oubier would have approved. It was the Jaguar stone, all right. Oh, oh, oh. My God, what's going on? I was seconds from death. I had to stop him somehow. Oh, my God, she's... What the hell am I supposed to do? Oh my. Oh, this is rough. Uh, how about the dagger? No? I'm sure you can do something with the dagger. Is there anything else here? Oh, my life. Oh, it was the dagger. I was about to make good my escape when... Cut! Who the hell are you? Uh, I can explain everything. Don't bother. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were making a movie. So who are you? Stobart, George Stobart. Uh, Two B's and two T's. It's okay, Mr. Hawks. He wasn't in the shot. Hawks? This had to be Carlton Hawks, the newest enfant terrible of Tinseltown. I'd read about him. 
Mailroom boy makes good. Nice to know it was still possible to get to be a director armed with only an encyclopedic knowledge of postal charges. Stay out of the way, surfer boy. I'll deal with you later. Surfer boy? It was a camera mounted on a precarious dolly, or whatever they call them. Are they filming a porno or something? You wouldn't get me up there. It was the cameraman. The great director. Well, that's what his pose was supposed to say. He reminded me of Ed Wood. <laughs> What's the name of the movie? Are you trying to be funny? No. It's Treasure Island. The only book I ever read twice. Who's the leading lady? Don't you recognize her? That's Sharon Kowalski. Oh, right. I'd never heard of her. You know what the locals call this place, don't you? No, but I guess you're gonna tell me. Zombie Island. Zombies? A crazed gleam came into his eye. Get me the writers. Get me makeup. I want zombie pirates in this movie by the end of today. <laughs> I don't recall any girls in Treasure Island. Gotta think box office. People like that kind of thing. What other changes have you made to the story? <laughs> Just a few minor details. You haven't written out Long John Silver. Are you questioning my integrity as an artist? Of course Silver's still in it. We've even hung on to Captain Flint. His parrot. His trained attack falcon. Why do you think blind pew's blind? Did you say you've changed the ending of the story? That's right. Do they find the treasure? Yeah, but that comes later. After they've escaped the volcanic eruption. A volcano? Sure. Krakatoa. All the millions spent on a movie. And nobody thinks to buy an atlas. Who's playing Jim Hawkins? Hi, Q. McEwen. Oh, don't tell me you've never heard of him. I don't go to the movies too often. Jeez. Haiku is only the hottest teen star in Hollywood. That's why we're on such a tight schedule. Gotta film the close-ups before he hits puberty. <laughs> right. It was the famous movie star, Sharon somebody or other. Hey there, I'm George Stobart. Well, hi, handsome. You're cute. I wish it was you playing the lead male instead of that kid. I can't act, ma'am. So what? I bet you can kiss. I couldn't believe I was having this conversation with a real movie star. What do you think of these? Ooh, they're awful. You have no idea how much you've just gone up in my estimation. <laughs> Take a look at this ancient Mayan artifact. That's just a hunk of stone with a picture scratched on it. In a way, I guess. You don't happen to have seen anything similar, have you? No. What part are you playing? Pirate Babs, the ruthless and passionate Lady Buccaneer. It's a great part. I get to kiss a lot, and I kick ass. Like the boots? I found this reed in the swamp on the other side of the island. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I used it to shoot a poison dart at a wild boar. It was a real-life drama, not just a scene from a movie. Right. She was having trouble with the whole real-life-is-not-a-movie concept. What do you think of Hawk's treatment of Treasure Island? It's okay, I guess. I never saw the original. It's a book. One of my favorites. Really? The novelization's out already? What's it like sharing the spotlight with an actor who's young enough to be your son? What do you mean? <laughs> Hi there, George Stobart. Uh-huh, yeah. Hi, Ku McEwen. You're playing Jim Hawkins, right? Jimbo. I had Mr. Hawks change his name. Jimbo Hawkins, right. I may not be making millions of dollars, and I may not have thousands of nubile, if uncritical, young women lusting for my body, but I've got something that you haven't. This small piece of coal. Man, you're getting freaky on me. 
Is your name really Haiku? Yeah. It was my mom's idea, okay? When I was born, I was so small and perfectly formed, I reminded her of a Japanese poem. Well, I guess it could have been worse. She could have called you Limerick. That's my middle name. <laughs> Did you always want to be an actor? I don't think of what I do as acting, man. You're not alone. It's more like <laughs> I'm the voice of my generation. What I'm saying, I'm saying for the kids on the street. Which is what? I'm crap, I'm going nowhere? Huh? What are you saying, man? Stobart, get out of shot. Positions, everybody. I'll get a flip chart and explain it to you later, Haiku. <laughs> haiku, baby, are you ready? Okay, man. Uh, which scene is this? You've been captured by Silver's accomplice, Pirate Babs, who's fallen in love with you. That whirring sound you can hear? It's Robert Louis Stevenson spinning in his grave. Okay, people. Top of page 76, Sharon. What about my big speech? It's been cut. Everybody ready? Up to speed. Quiet on the set. Okay, let's make magic. Oh, please. And action! What about my big speech? Why don't you forget that dumb old squire and his bunch of merry men? Can't you see we were made for each other? I know, but Squire Trelawney saved my life, Captain Babs. Why, if it hadn't have been for him, that giant octopus would have made mincemeat out of me. But right now he thinks you're a traitor. He's locked you out of the stockade, Jimbo. That 20-foot high wall with spikes might have kept out Silver's men. But it ain't gonna stop me. Oh, Jimbo. And cut! Good heavy breathing, Sharon. Natch, I'm a pro. <laughs> Did you get the heavy breathing flash? Did I ever, boss? You should have made this movie in 3D. Haiku, you were great. We're setting up for the stunt now, so get a bite to eat. Savage, on set, damn it. Oh, it's a stunt. Stunt guy. Hi, I'm George Stobart. My name's Harris. Most people call me Flash. You're the cameraman, right? That's right. Why'd they call you Flash? You used to be a stills photographer? Nope. I decided not to pursue the subject. What do you think of Haiku McEwen? What's to think? The kid will have earned more by the time his balls drop than I'll earn in a lifetime. Good luck to him. Okay. He was a middle-aged man with a pockmarked face. I'd seen a lot of strange things on this island, but here was a bush that was buzzing. As I walked towards the bush, it started buzzing angrily. Hi, George Stobart. Hello, mate. You're English, right? Blimey, you don't miss much, do you? Bert Savage. <laughs> How long have you been in the movie business? Flipping years, mate. Absolutely flipping years. I was in the army before that. Thought to myself, you've been risking your bleeding neck every day. Why not cash in on it like? So you became a stuntman, just like that? Nah, of course not. I had to do the training first. What training does a stuntman do? First, they told me to stand in the road. Then, they run me down. Straight <laughs> up. Drove at me with a car. I couldn't believe it. I was up on the bonnet and over the other side before I realized he wasn't stopping. Then they threw me downstairs a bit and gives me a certificate. I don't want to worry you, but there's a hornet's nest over in that bush. Hornets. That reminds me of a film I was in. The Black Hornet. The Black Hornet? I don't remember seeing that one. Before your time, most likely. What happens in it? 
Lummy, what don't happen in it? I was shot, stabbed, fed to piranhas, dangled from an airship, and trampled by a zebra. No, I mean, what was the plot? Plot? Did you ever work with Carol Climax? The dirty dashend? I'll say. Flipping princess, mate. I heard she was very beautiful. Mind you, she acted like one too. Ordering this, demanding that. <laughs> Did you ever meet Bertrand de Meet him? No. I saw him a few times, though. He didn't like his wife being in films. Do you think Ubier murdered his wife? I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Mind you, there were plenty of people who could have done her in. I thought the public loved her. Yeah, but people who knew her saw the other side. Have you ever seen anything like this before? What's that, mate? Stone axe? No, it's just a piece of polished stone. Very nice, very nice indeed. Shine it up a bit, you get a few bob for that. <laughs> hey, Haiku! Yeah, man. There was nothing else I wanted to ask you. There was a pot of delicious looking maple syrup on the table. It was a plate of buns. It was a pile of pancakes, much depleted by Bert. I didn't want another one of the pancakes in my pocket. The bun was so stale it felt like a small rock. It was a stale bun which... It was a pot of maple... Combine pancakes with syrup. Give them to Bert. Mr. Hawks, I was wondering if... Not now. i got a movie to make. Time for the stunt, Savage. It's a short run, bounce on the plank, and somersault over the spikes and stockade wall. Do what? Plank, spikes, wall, over. Easy, a child could do it. At my age? You must be joking. I could replace you, Savage. Yeah, with an arthritic baboon. Replace me? Mummy, this could be the last stunt I ever perform. I need to think about this. Get myself in the right frame of mind. A suicidal one would fit the bill for that stunt. Fine. You do that. In the meantime, we'll break for lunch. Oh, great. I'm famished. Stay right there and meditate, Savage. tight ass little git. The stockade was surrounded by a dry moat filled with sharp wooden stakes. No way was I going to try and jump it. Those stakes looked real. It was a plank balanced precariously on a barrel. I wasn't going to upset Hawks anymore by tampering with his props. The drawbridge was up. I couldn't see any way of lowering the drawbridge. Or any reason for wanting to. Oh, the actors are gone. Oh. What have you got there? Would you like a pancake, Bert? Don't mind if I do. The pancake oozed maple syrup all over Bert's chins. Ugh, you put bloody syrup on that pancake. Now it's messed me all up. Would you like this pot of syrup? No way, I'm messed up enough already. Would you like a bun? No way. The last one I tried cracked my dentures. Those hornets were not pleased.
Paris in the fall, the last months of the year and the end of the millennium. The city holds many memories for me, of cafes, of music, of love, and of death. Paris in the spring. Passion, romance, l'amour. I was working in art insurance. It paid the rent, just about. And then, by chance, I met Nico at a private view. You didn't tell me that you were back in Paris, George. We should catch up. Let's have lunch. Nobody move! <laughs> 